Welcome back to another episode of Open RCT2 Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to be discussing mazes and labyrinths. Now for those that aren't familiar, the difference between a maze and a labyrinth is that a maze is a collection of branching paths that must be solved to reach the exit. So the path can branch off in different directions, there can be dead ends, it can reconnect with itself, but it's sort of like a puzzle where the guests have to solve it in order to get out of the maze. On the other hand, a labyrinth is generally considered to be a continuous path. It's non-branching, there's no dead ends or anything like that, it's a singular path from start to finish. So guests merely need to follow the path and eventually they will reach the exit. Now I'm sure we are all familiar with the maze in Roller Coaster Tycoon. It's a really versatile ride. You can build it into whatever shape you want. It's very customizable. And the game also gives you a few really nice pre-made designs. However, I found the disadvantage with this ride is that you can't really have a very large maze without guests getting lost. This is the Spiral Hedges pre-made design, which I think is really pretty. I used to love putting it in my parks, but it didn't take long before guests will always start complaining that they want to get off the maze because they're lost and it doesn't look like it's that complicated but I don't want my guests to be complaining all the time. Here we have the guest saying I want to get off spiral hedges which is not the experience I want for my guests. So I prefer labyrinths but before we delve into labyrinths I want to talk about this plugin called the maze generator. So with this plugin all you have to do is create the border with a path or something of the shape you want your maze to be in. So you just create a continuous border like so and then you just build your two tiles of maze here so you can have your entrance and exit. They don't have to be right next to each other, but then you're going to open the plugin. There is a link in the video description if you want to download it, but you open the maze generator plugin, make sure the correct maze is selected and hit generate and boom, there's our maze. It's that simple. It's created our own design, although I don't really like the entrance and exit. It's too easy. So just keep hitting generate until you find a design you like. That's a little better, but too easy. So just keep hitting generate. I should have put the entrance and exit farther apart, but all right, there we go. There is a design that looks pretty nice. So you just open it and it's that simple. We have our maze. So whatever shape you want, let the plugin do the work and it will just come up with the design for you. So the only problem is this doesn't look that large of a maze, but unfortunately, it doesn't take long before the guests start complaining that they want to get off maze one because they're getting lost. So this is just why I don't like mazes because you can't really have a very large maze without guests complaining. So that is the big disadvantage with the maze. Also, one other thing to mention about this plugin is you need to make sure that you have that continuous border around your design before you generate the maze. For example, if I delete these path pieces right here, or if you had disable clearance checks turned on when you generate the maze, you will have some problems. So let's take a look. Here's the maze generator. Let's generate it again. And apart from trying to break my computer, this might take a few seconds, but all of a sudden we are left with the world's largest maze. Every single open tile in this park has now become part of this one maze. So I don't think this is really what I wanted to have happen. Just a park that's one giant maze where guests definitely are going to be complaining in this. I don't know if they would even ever be able to exit, but that is how powerful this plugin is, so it's really fun to mess around with. And I'm just going to do one more example. So you just use a path to kind of create your outline of the maze, and then you can build it however you want. Um, I'm going to put my exit here, entrance here, add a queue line, something like that. And then we open the plugin and we generate the maze. And there we go. I'm going to do it one more time. There we go. That looks good. It's simple as and you can always touch it up and edit it as you like. But if you don't want to build your own maze, this plugin comes in so handy. But I prefer labyrinths because you can build a much larger ride and guests are not going to complain that they want to get off the maze. So this is an example of a labyrinth from my Rainbow Towers park. And it is symmetrical on either side. If you split it right down the middle, it's a mirror image. And it was just a great way to fill in a really large area and have it look really nice and pretty and go with the park vibe. And here is a another example where I have an indoor roller coaster that is housed in this gigantic building here. So we have the ride underneath kind of halfway underground 
but I built this humongous structure around it and I was looking at this rooftop thinking this is just such a waste of space in the park. What can I do to make it look better and use the space? So I created this gigantic labyrinth at 15 by 15 tiles. It's the largest I've ever designed, but it is so stunning to have that symmetrical design and it's just one continuous path so the guests won't get lost. And here's another example of a labyrinth I placed on the rooftop of a building. I have a tunnel of lava ride hidden inside this giant building, and I just thought it doesn't look great in the game to have a giant rectangular roof of just empty space, so I thought why not fill it with a nice secret garden on top of the building. And I think if I had built a maze using this uh, large of a space, the guests would start complaining that they want to get off the ride. So the labyrinth definitely solves that problem. And I think it just looks much better as well. And now I'm going to quickly show you how I build a labyrinth. So here we have our entrance building and I'm just going to actually build an outline of the shape I want the labyrinth to be in. So it's gonna be kind of octagonal. So I'm just gonna go around the outside edge all the way around here. So kind of a nice shape here, but instead of connecting, I'm going to actually double back right here and outline it again and kind of work my way inward. So you always wanna make sure you leave some room though to get back out. So don't build yourself into a dead end. And then here we're gonna end up, just gotta fix this little area right here at the front. And there we go. And now I can put my exit. So that is one way to build a labyrinth really nice and easy. Uh, the other way is to kind of do a version where you mirror image each side right down the middle. So I'm just going to create some sort of random pattern here and then now I'm going to mirror it and do the same thing on the other side. So it's just something really simple like that. And that is how you can kind of get these really nice geometric pattern kind of looking labyrinths but I want to make it look better so then it just kind of takes some work to just kind of poke around at it and just keep going to make it look really nice and ornate if that's the look you're going for. So you can spend a lot of time on these. Uh, another way to go about it is to look on Google Images for some references or something like that, although it is hard to find some that are in a grid style a labyrinth. A lot of them are curvy if you look at images online, but we do our best in Roller Coaster Tycoon. It does take some time and effort to make a really nice pattern I think at least for me I like to have a lot of the uh, empty green hedge kind of space there so if you don't have any path it will replace it with just kind of that blank hedge although you have to be careful because if you have too much of that blank hedge the game will delete the entire tile as you'll see right here oops there goes the tile so you gotta make sure there's at least one quarter of the tile is occupied by path but this is looking pretty good I mirror imaged it right down the center there's a little gap in the middle so you could put some scenery but I think that is looking pretty good so that is the other way you can build a labyrinth is just kind of make a shape and mirror it straight down the middle and then if you want to work at it to make it look prettier you can do that so I think it's really fun to build these but if you don't want to build a labyrinth yourself I actually have a lot of pre-made designs that I've come up with here we can see these two large ones there's actually just one tile difference between the two but this one on top has little holes for scenery right there and this one is actually full of hedge in the middle but they're just mirror imaged right down the middle and here's a little scenery tip I actually place a base block underneath the scenery items to kind of lift them up uh, so you can see them better above the hedges so that's a nice tip but here's a nice four by four little labyrinth really small nice and easy next to it we have a six by six with little holes in the middle where you could put some trees or scenery items so that's another nice option it just kind of goes around here and right down the middle is where the mirror imaging is and then I kind of created this X pattern in the center here it's just one big X with kind of you know a lot of symmetry here and then we can move over here and I have another symmetrical kind of design here where it goes through one half and then doubles back and mirror images right down the middle and then this one here I actually kind of mirror image it in two different places but just another option and here are the this giant labyrinth you saw earlier with the holes in the middle for scenery and here's another version where I just filled in the holes with hedge but that is a extremely large labyrinth at 15 by 15 tiles now if you'd like to save any of these designs that I've made, there is a link in the video description for the park download and then you can choose whichever of these labyrinths you'd like to save the track design. And if you enjoyed this video, please give
give it a like and let me know in the comments if you prefer mazes or labyrinths and be sure to check out my rct2 merch i have two links in the video description for my redbubble and fourth wall shops and as always make sure to subscribe because next time i'm going to be starting my water park series showing you how to build everything from splash pads and lazy rivers to multi-slide towers in fact the first video showing you how to build a wave pool is already out so stay tuned for more